to get this energy in the nation right now that is angry, frustrated, and they want to hit anybody. So we have certain candidates that are sucking that up and changing our label. As a party, we owe it to ourselves to speak out and not have the tail wag the dog and not have somebody say all of a sudden, if you don't play my game, then I'm running as an independent. Remember when things said behind closed doors actually stayed there and the people who said them wanted to keep them there in order to lend some power to an actual plan? Uh, we, of course, live in a world where nothing is secret. The foolish believe they have to record it all, brag about it. When the attack subject is Donald Trump, it proves once again how this Republican Party may be on the verge of doing itself incredible damage by splitting their efforts and Democrats' hands. They ring with glee every time something like this happens. Let's make sense of it all then. Feast with the political animal from the leftovers of Thursday night in Charleston, South Carolina. Seated at the table first, professor at Georgetown University and Republican strategist Bradley Blakeman. Joining him as the main course, veteran Democratic media strategist for Kate Communications, Franco Ripple. All right, gentlemen, let's launch into this. Wow, Bradley, this is Holland Redfield. We just saw the tape. He actually took this and he made it public. He sent it to Politico because he wants to get it out there that the Republicans need. To, and he didn't mention Donald Trump by name, but you know that's exactly who he was talking about. Brad, maybe this is a good thing. Get it out there. Expose the problems. Maybe this will help bring this party together. Yes? Yes, really. I think transparency and openness is a breath of fresh air. Let's get things from behind closed doors out in the open, discuss it. And at the end of the day, uh, Republicans are gonna decide, the rank and file, the grassroots out there are gonna go to the polls, are gonna take us in the direction they think we should go. The question is, once that decision is made, will the rank and file Republicans respect that? And it depends on the nominee. Franco, from a Democratic strategist standpoint, can you use something like this to your advantage? And then tell us who you think won last night. Oh, there's no doubt uh, Democrats are, are very happy to see this. You know, and Brad is right. This is a process that should take place out in the open with full transparency. But what's actually happening is truly a GOP civil war. Um, there's a real bloodletting going on in the Republican Party because it's in the process of uh, generational and transformational change. What I found interesting about that video is that the gentleman in the video represents the Virgin Islands for the RNC. So he's someone who completely understands minority outreach for the Republican Party, something that it has an abysmal record on. If the RNC and the Republican Party is going to expand its brand, it's got to reach out to people like who he represents. And they're not doing that right now. As far as the debate last night, who did I think won? Uh, not really anyone. Trump and Cruz certainly went against <laughs> each other on some silly lines, but I'm not sure there was a winner. I knew you would say that. I just had to set you <laughs> up and see if you were going to go ahead and hit the softball. Uh, yeah. Brad, let's go ahead and get into something here that came out of this, this whole New York values comment, which seems to be what Donald Trump is really hitting on. I grew up in New York. I get what he's talking about. I get what Cruz is talking about because a lot of the nation doesn't really like New York and really doesn't get along with New York. So I understand it. In the same breath, though, is it not possible that this is still a strategy because he realizes it's a long strategy? And do you think he's really worried that there's a backlash from New York or is this going to really hammer away and hurt him? No, it's dumb. It's dumb for any candidate to disparage an important part, any part, of the country he's going to hope to seek to represent. Look, I'm from New York, born and raised in New York. I'm a conservative Republican. Uh, New York is a diverse state. Um, it, but for New York City, it would be uh, a, a rule state. But doesn't it show uh, that, though, Brad, that when he says something like that, when Cruz says something about this, it shows he does not understand that there is a absolutely. difference between yeah. New York State, between Albany, between the yeah. Hudson Valley, Rockland County, yep. New York City, and Long Island. Huge difference absolutely like night and day and that's why we say when we're long islanders upstate upstate can actually mean westchester to us <laughs> um the bottom line is uh, look at the gdp alone of new york it's third in our nation uh look at the spirit of new york as donald trump correctly put look he walked into a buzzsaw last night uh cruise and he should have saw it coming 
He also should have saw the attacks on his citizenship coming from Donald Trump. And to me, Ted Cruz is not proving to be the smart debater that everybody says he is. It certainly does seem that way with the New York comment. 90 seconds to go. A couple of things. Let's get through them quick. Franco, let me come back to you. Washington Post title. Hillary Clinton's national lead is slipping faster in 2016 than it did in 2008. Come on, Brad. This has got to have people on the left now thinking Bernie Sanders. Maybe we better get behind this guy a little more. <laughs> Look, Bernie but Sanders. No, oh, go, go ahead, ahead Franco. Frank. It's to you. OK, well, you know, I don't give that article a lot of credence necessarily because in the very same article, it also said don't pay attention to national polls yet. They change uh, dramatically, especially once voting begins. You know, what, what I always say is look more closely at the state polls. And there you can see right now in Iowa, she's out, uh, outpacing where she was this time, 2008. She was roughly minus five at this point out in 2008. Today, she's plus five. Plus, when you get out of these first two states, which are really heavily majority white, uh, Bernie Sanders' support is going to really fall off because these more diverse coalition states, Hillary Clinton's going to do a lot better, like South Carolina. 30 seconds here. Planned Parenthood is suing over undercover videos, and this comes down now to an issue because it came up last night on the debate with Chris Christie and Planned Parenthood. Franco, to you very quickly, the Planned Parenthood issue, is it one that you believe Democrats will hammer on and use this against any candidate in the final go against anybody for an election? Yes, as well they should, because women's health, especially for low-income women, is extremely important. They're trying to take that away from those women through defunding Planned Parenthood when the bill's already been paid for half a billion dollars. Plus the lawsuit, it seems completely legitimate. There was a legal, potentially illegal secret taping going on. They need to get to the bottom of that. Ten seconds to you then, Brad. Is this an Achilles heel for the Republicans? Absolutely not. If anything, I think it's going to energize our base. And at the end of the day, it's going to expose Planned Parenthood for the for the abhorrent practices that they do on a daily basis. We shouldn't be funding them. They should be on their own. If people want to contribute, that's fine, but no federal money. And we energize the base every single day. Your Franco Ripple, Bradley Blakeman, thanks so much for joining us, gentlemen. And on the way out, make sure you tell us who won the GOP debate. Go to NewsmaxPolls.com. The Hardline continues.